One day I looked at a prophet and he wore this, he wore that. He was, I said, God, is this what your prophets have become? No, we don't want any comfort. The, day, the time God told us to sit on the ground, prophetess, before we were allowed now to sit on chairs, you need to see how many churches attacked us just for sitting on the ground in the presence of God. And their back is hurting them. What kind of thing? We are telling you, God said we should sit on the ground. Hey, why are you punishing these people? Check his life. He has not won two souls for the past 10 years. So I'm coming and ask, why are you not wearing shoe in the church? Why is it your concern? See, because the pastor they show you, you know, they have to wear Gucci suit. Go and look at the names of churches today. You will know God did not give this name. The Soft Life Ministry. Pastor keeping dreads. Members dress. Everyone is mad there. Look at their dances. You will know that it's worldly musicians that is actually their pastor. And the Lord now say, who is your guy? He shows you what he has been listening to, sir. Those are the kind of pastors that have time to go to night of a thousand laugh. Your members are dying. You are buying tables. A village invited you. You didn't go. A comedian invited you. Come, come on, my pastor. Come and have a table. You carry all your family there. You have nothing with God, sir. A big LED screen and speakers. You have nothing. I tell you, I can't even listen to those fools. There's nothing they can teach you. You know now, sir, ministry is now I hustle, hustle, and I now blue. That's what they now hold as the rod of their testimony. And you didn't know when we were suffering you do elegba. Who told you big ministry is now big ministry is big responsibility? Go to my house and see the way brethren. I don't have a big house so that I can, you know, we are super fly. Go and see brethren in my house. There are many who say that they are prophets and they are not. But by what in this is do we try these people to find them liars? If you start, they will say, oh, don't judge anyone. So we should accept you because you prophesy. The Bible says, test all spirit. When you find a spirit that's not of God, what should you do? Oh, no, just leave them for God. No, sir. You expose them. Light is that which makes manifest. The Holy Ghost told me this morning. He said, when you people say, go and manifest. You know, we always tell ourselves, as you hold the mic, manifest. He said, what you people are truly saying is, go and become the light. Because light is that which makes manifest. It's not go and perform a show. It's go, stand there and become the light. Make your light known to the people. If you begin to feel sleepy now, it's an attack. You are hearing things that are holy. Now, now it's now that oh, we finished 18 hours. By 11 o'clock, I was with prophetess Regina. We stayed there till to one after one. I've forgotten. After one, standing. Moving in the Holy Ghost. By 4.35, we were with Emmanuel, Imaraba. We were there till 8 o'clock for the sake of the gospel of Jesus. In the morning, we are standing here. You, what have you been doing? Don't be a thief and a robber. And has born and has patience. And for my name's sake, thou hast labored and hast not fainted. So, the church of Ephesus, that's why they were the capital. They were the seat of judgment. These guys were, they were laborers. Patient men. And they, and they did not faint. Now next. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Hey, brother. This kind of church, God still found something wrong with them. What we God now find with our mega church and our street church and our parlor churches and our plaza church. If this kind of church, this was the church that the Bible said, there we are prophets and teachers. 
where the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. This kind of church, when the Lord, meanwhile, why this prophecy was valid was because John was in the house of Patmos, so there was no way he could know what was now currently going on in the church. This is the power of a prophetic encounter. So when they open the letter, there they know what is going on among them. Because thou hast left thy first love. Before you were trying apostles, those who claim to be apostles, you now exposed many of them that were liars. You could not tolerate that which was evil. You couldn't stand evil men. But now they told you, hey, judge not lest ye be judged. You know, this they live there for God. Don't say anything. You know, you are now in the city, you know, just embrace everyone. Why will you be condemning them? And then they now say, oh boy, it's true. Everybody hates us. So, uh, this thing let us pipe down a little. And God saw it as backsliding. He said, well, how you began? He said, you have left. You've lost it. Go back. Thou has left. Sorry. You've left. Your, you, you departed from the first thing you were doing. This compromise. This is what backsliding is. So because of the way they attack me online and people threaten me and no one wants to associate with them. I'm now saying, ah, you know, okay, this thing. Uh, let's just preach. No, sir. Every church has an emphasis from God. Every church has a reason for which God puts his name among them. We cannot all preach the same message because the instruction, the rebuke and the recommendations of God to us are different. From the message of, listen, I didn't want to tell you this now, but, but let me just tell you anyway. Listen, I found out that the only unitary or unified message, the only thing that unifies our message is the bread and the wine. The only time our message can be the same as the church of Christ on earth is when the church is speaking to the world. Because to the world we speak Jesus and him crucified. And to ourselves also we speak Jesus and him crucified. But the bodies of God from his perspective to us is different according to the territories he has put us in and the things he has called us to confront. And then the things that confronts us. He would have given one. Oh, all of you have. No, no, no. Some lost their first love. Some, this was their problem. Some, this was. So his emphasis for them is different. And because his emphasis for them is different. The message. This is perfecting of the saint here. There we are falling short in a level. Thou hast left thy first love. Next. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, you can remember where you started backsliding from. Some, when, when you got a miracle job, that was when, you know, prayer now stopped. You now start looking at pastor as a small boy. Come, let me advise you, pastor, you know. This thing, this thing. Some of us are coming here, not because we don't have options. May God help you to come and meet me. Say remember from there was a point where you now stopped. God put a body in your spirit and then he put the fire boldness in you and then you were speaking the truth of God online and then pastors started calling you. People started attacking you in the comment session and then you now stopped. Remember the point from where you fell. You were a giver. God gave you a passion to make sure whatever is of God advances. You didn't think twice. And then Satan now sent people to tell you that hey, all your money you give church. Your mumu not too much. Tell pastor the fresh you the lean. When that little test came, you now fell. So it showed that you were doing all this thing for men, not for him. was the church of Ephesus. He said, or else I will come to thee quickly 
and will remove thy candlestick out of what? His place except thou repent. So there's always, even though he rebukes you, there's always a room for repentance. Now, what was the candlestick? The candlestick wall that we had the churches. So he said, if you do not repent, I will remove your church from its place in my presence. Meanwhile, in the physical, the church may be buying more land. In fact, that is when they will now have more cars, more branches. See, I will say something. Some people mis misinterpret it as attack. But see, it is whipping. When I saw this, brethren, and I looked at the Church of Africa, I looked at our ministry, our gathering. I looked at other gatherings. I said, Lord, what do we celebrate? And then the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, you people celebrate creating of new branches as though you've triumphed over order of your brethren. Not triumphing over Satan. They are celebrating. They don't know that. We, they will know that we came to this city. He's not talking about their, it's their brethren. All this church making noise. Don't worry. We've entered the area now. Celebrating the opening of branches as though they've now won a trophy over their brethren. Not over Satan. Celebrating the emptying of the other churches. And that your church now is the biggest here. When we came to this city, there were some churches making noise here. God of heaven. Are you now Satan? You are celebrating that another church is closing. You, oh my God. Let's do it mega, mega. You go to streets. Instead of you to say, Christians in this street, miss here. You say, no, house of Salem, miss here. So if someone is not a part of house of Salem, you can stay in that area. You won't greet that person. I wrote it down. See, I, I, I broke down. So we don't expand the doors of our Christian gathering so that God can have witnesses in eternity. It's so that our organization can be seen as more prosperous than another person's organization. And Satan is just there laughing. He's cheering you. In fact, he will attend your dedication ceremony. If you are not careful as a man of God, as a minister, they will give you the psychology of the church of the cities. And then you look at your church. You look at other man's church. Instead of you to see it as the gathering of the believers, you will say, ah, he don't church food today. What is this? What is happening? There is this fulfillment. Yes, whoever said that is true. It's witchcraft. It's an attack of witchcraft. Are you seeing, are you not, have you not seen preachers who have fulfilled that uh, oh, the church is I told you the church will be empty. See, to the best of us, that thing comes. You have to shut it down. How many crowd came today? How many people? There was a time I was asking, how many people came to? Uh, and I said, no, no, no. How many what? Even if it's one person. Is it wherever two or three are gathered in my name? He doesn't discriminate with his presence. He didn't say I will give the place where they have 20,000 people more of my presence than the no, sir. Wherever. Can I tell you the mystery of the presence of God? You know, I've been asking a question. I say, God, how come we are all calling on to you on Sundays, especially? And you are in this church, you are in this church, you are here, you are there. How are you everywhere? I now discover something. As much as God can be everywhere, his true church, whenever they begin to worship him, what happens is that they appear in his presence. So you are thinking distance. God is seated on the throne, seeing all of you assembled before him. Aye. I know only few people understand. So if you are the true worshiper, you worship in spirit. They grow from strength to strength as many of them that appear unto God in Zion. So if you are the church of the firstborn, whenever you gather, he 
is in your presence and you are in his presence. So you are not in your event center. You are not in your facility. You've appeared in his presence. So as the Lord of the church, he sits down and hear your worships, hear your prayers, hear your burdens, hear everything is with them. And then he releases a blessing on you all. And he said, go forth, multiply. Correct this. I go together. Also, I will come unto thee quickly. I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Now, let's move. Let's be a little faster now. But this thou hast, that thou hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, if you can read about the deeds of the Nicolaitans, the Nicolaitans came from, according to what I read, they came out of Nicholas. You know, when they were choosing seven, when they were choosing the Dickens, they chose Stephen and they chose a Nicholas. Now, this is just what I read, you know. And according to what I read, Nicholas began to pioneer a teaching that embraced unism. If you're an idol worshiper, just come, everything. We can even do, an, an, uh, you know, we can do a statue of Saint, this person. You know, so it was just an all-embracing kind of doctrine. Well, you can do your own research, you know. But here it does not tell us what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans actually was or the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He said, but he hated it. This church was a very designing church, was a very strict church. And their strictness saved them a lot of trouble because it was the same church that tried those who claimed to be apostles and they found them to be liars. It was the same church that tried, that could not stand evil men. It was the same church that also exhibited hatred towards the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And the Lord now told us, okay, you have this advantage with you. And let's read the next. We're done. Next, next. So that we can hurry up and close. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Next. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, This thing said the first and the last, which was dead, and alive. Are you noticing that he introduced himself differently to these different churches? That speaks of the different dimensions of God that are seen in the different gatherings scattered all around the world. The Bible said there are diverse manifestations but the same God walketh in all. Are we together? So don't force me to know God as you know him. He reveals himself diverse to us. But by this, that's why if you see a manifestation of the spirit, the Bible says test it. Just like the brother asked. God, we not say, don't be asking me questions. No. Even though there is a move, you still need to ask, Holy Ghost, are you the one? You'll test it. That's if you know the presence of God. I'm not talking about suspicion and that, that's a kind of man. Nothing there. You know, some people's own discernment is what people say. Hey, I hear said they say, you are, you are dead. <laughs> oh my God. As, as much as testimony is not bad, because we must also have good report. So the Bible says, men of good report, among the brethren, not among gossipers, among those that are brethren, those that have had encounters with these people, good report. God does not sponsor gossip. Good report. I know thy works and thy tribulation and thy poverty, but thou art rich. You notice that everything he was saying to them, let me see that. But thou art rich. Yeshua knew of their poverty, but he told them, do not, this is a word of consolation. Say, do not worry. In my sight, you are rich. You see? Someone now will pick this and say, oh, 
They had riches with God, but they did not know. No, sir. He knew they were poor net, but was telling them, don't allow your poverty to discourage you because you have riches with me. You know, thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. So in the territory where they were, they were certain Jewish people that were making mockeries of them, ridiculing them, insulting them. The blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are what? The synagogue of what? Satan. This guy said they are Jews, but they are not. Because the Jews, a Jew wouldn't blaspheme. Say, these ones are not. Of the synagogue of Satan, let's move. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So I was telling them that with what you have now, these guys were poor. They were already going through a lot. They were consoled by the Lord. And he still told them that you will still begin to suffer more things. He said, but do not fear. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. If God is with me, why am I suffering? That's why God is with you. Things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall what? Shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be what? Tried. That's what Satan is aiming. The Bible says the trial of our faith worketh in us patience. That's what your trial should bet. Not complain. Not patience. Satan now is trying you so that you can fall from your faith. And one of the signs that a man has fallen from his faith is what? You begin to curse God. God, why you begin to bring a charge against your God? That was what Satan. That was what Satan was looking for in Job. So you be true. You are poor, instead, and you be praying, God, come true for us. And instead of an angel to come swiftly, the next place you find yourself is prison. Meanwhile, there are Jewish people in your cities, fellow Christians in our contemporary generation. That are insulting you and mocking you every day. Insulting you. Ay, 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 ay. Say, you are going to be thrown into prison so that you can be tried. And ye what shall have tribulation 10 days. He now says something. He said, be thou faithful what? Unto death. Oh man, these were Christians. Even though this tribulation ends your life. Say, be faithful unto death. And I will, this is a promise, I will give thee a crown of life. Because you lost your life and you died, you will now have life as a reward. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hot of the second death. What was the name of this church? Huh? Smena. The church of God in Abeguta. The poor church, the suffering church, the one that was thrown into prison, the one that was impoverished, the one that maybe other mega churches are saying, oh, there's a secret of wealth that they don't know. That's why they are suffering there. This was the church he didn't have anything against. You are the one suffering. You are the one forgotten as a missionary in a village. Yet you and your family have not cursed God. They are telling you, you know, you, that you are not according to the new style of revelation. You don't know portals. You don't know angels. You just know faithfulness. Faithfulness to God. Now you don't know the mystery of the seven keys of wealth. But you, you know service unto God. You will cry with your family. And maybe what you have that day to eat is Akamu. Say you. Sometimes the weakest of us are the best of us. The poorest of us are the best of us. Anytime I have the privilege of visiting any church in the north. I always tell them, I say, 
you people, your Christianity and your faith is better than ours. Do you know why I always congratulate them? Don't think you are strong. We don't know what you and I will do if we were put in the same position. The fact that they are still standing, they need to be saluted. Like Paul said, your faith is held all around. A pastor has been trying to invite me to Pakistan. And my brother said when, I, when he went to their page, he saw these people gathering in small houses, in small tents, they are just and the pastor that was bold enough to say no matter what, even though this is an Islamic state, I would hold Christian program. He was the one the people gathered to. And then my brother said he saw something. Every service was them offering their life unto God. Because they don't know when the authorities will come next. They don't know when the next bomb will blast. So every service is their life they are offering. You are in Abuja here. Church don't start. Thank you, Jesus. This church make I will go to this self. Pastor just they talk to them. Then they close early. What a thief and a robber. I told my brother, I said, look for them. Tell them I'm coming. Go and look at where people are Christians. You die your prayer. God, if you are God, give me a job. How is God patient? Me, I don't know how to be patient with such criminals. Give me a job and show that you are God. Of what use have you been to God for the past 20 years? Meanwhile, people, any time they attend church, is their life they are offering to God. People who sit, whose churches are in places where Satan dwell. And it's the same heaven we want to go with those people. When you look at what we call church in the city, go to the village and see Christians. If you host a program that we gather, they don't have money, they have no car, they don't know handset and iPhone. But when they lift up their hands and begin to sing, Hosanna Bukole, Hallelujah, Rosanna. God, you oh, you see a woman who has been praying for 50 years non-stop. 50 years. Not for car, not for house. Jesus, save my village. All our prayer retreat, money. My success must come by fire. We become dogs. That's why God will allow Herod carry us into captivity. That's why God will allow hiddens that will keep ruling you to show you that with all what you are doing, you are nothing. You cannot take a territory. Go to the village and see Christians. In those days that we went for retreats, when we were younger, you will see a pastor. His shoe is bad with his big suit. All he knows is John 316. His church is that house. Yet they don't miss one service. Faithful. If you see them praying, you begin to ask, Ah! See, sometimes your bed, you should become tired of your bed. And how many times I've looked at I say, should I just sell, sell every, and I'm sincere. Let me just say, oh my God. One day I looked at a prophet and he wore this, he wore that. He was, I say, God, is this what your prophets have become? No, we don't want any comfort. The, day, the time God told us to sit on the ground, prophetess, before we were allowed now to sit on chairs, you need to see how many churches attacked us just for sitting on the ground in the presence of God. And their back is hurting them. What kind of thing? We are telling you, God said we should sit on the ground. And why are you punishing these people? Check his life. He has not won two souls for the past 10 years. Some come and ask, why are you not wearing shoe in the church? Why is it your concern? See, because the pastor they show you, you know, they have to wear Gucci suit. Go and look at the names of churches today. You will know God did not give this name. The Soft Life Ministry. Pastor keeping dreads. Members dress. Everyone is mad there. Look at their dances. You will know that it's worldly musicians that is actually their pastor. 
And the Lord now says, who is your guy? He shows you what he has been listening to, sir. Those are the kind of pastors that have time to go to night of a thousand laugh. Your members are dying. You are buying tables. A village invited you. You didn't go. A comedian invited you. Come, come on, my pastor. Come and have a table. You carry all your family there. You have nothing with God, sir. Have big LED screen and speakers. You have nothing. I tell you. I can't even listen to those fools. There's nothing they can teach you. You know now, sir, ministry is now I hustle, hustle, and I now blue. That's what they now hold as the rod of their testimony. And you didn't know when we were suffering, you do a leg bar. Who told you big ministry is now big ministry is big responsibility? Go to my house and see the way brethren. I don't have a big house so that I can hear, you know, we are super fly. Go and see brethren in my house. As we are singing, the Holy Ghost began to speak to me. He said, do you know why your generation lost? Do you know why they struggle with immorality? Do you know why they struggle with weaknesses? They are not working for me. You are too bored, you know. You are too bored, so Satan. Because if you are fighting for the lives of people, contending in prayer for the souls of men, you won't have time to look at a woman. When David became bored, that was where his greatest sin came from. We are not doing anything. We leave church now, his house and TV. We are not doing it. Tell me how many people here is doing prayers. Morning cry. My parents, my old parents, me with all my mysteries, my old parents came here. The next thing I heard was that they sent tracks from Makodi. That's the Christianity they grew under. The Christianity that takes tracks to walk. Takes Bible and tracks everywhere they are going. You buy one car. Uh, God, uh, uh, God can do it bigger, bigger. Hello, thank you for watching the video, and I hope you have a great access to And I hope it will go somewhere useful. If you haven't commented, if you haven't liked this video, and for more videos. Can you subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos? God bless you.